Explain in layman's terms what exactly is going to be happening up to the, the actual uh, election, how it's going to work and, and what you think is going to happen afterwards. Right. I mean, right now we are kind of at the peak of the campaign season. Um, I, I think there are two things here to kind of remember. The one most significant thing, actually, I think that this is the first time since 99 when Nigeria um, returned to democracy that an incumbent president faces a really tight election. Up until now, we pretty much took took it as a given that a sitting president would win a re-election. So it's quite significant from that point of view. And if Nigeria, I mean, Africa's largest economy, um, actually manages, and also Africa's most populous um, nation manages to actually successfully hand over power to a new government. I think that's pretty significant more broadly for the African continent, given that, you know, there's a lot of political risk issues around the continent. Um, as far as, you know, what happens, I mean, I think it's very difficult right now for people to win. Quite frankly, I, for people to kind of determine who wins. But from, from my position, I think that the precedent potentially could have, might have lost that incumbent advantage. Why? Why? Why is it so tight this time around? If, as you say, traditionally it, it's it's been a it's been a handover method. I think security obviously is the big issue. Um, you've, Nigeria has obviously made a lot of headlines in the last two years given um, terrorism-related risks um, with Boko Haram in the northeast, and that has become an issue that is now top of voters' agenda. Corruption is another one that is quite big. I mean, I think that the domestic perception is that the government has not done enough to address endemic corruption. Now, if you think about the fact that in the context of the global oil price drop, Nigeria as a petro state relies heavily, I mean, about 65 to 70 percent of government revenues relies on um, oil. With oil prices going down, the issue of corruption has become far more important for voters. You combine that with the security challenges, and I think effectively what you're getting is a protest vote against the president rather than a, a solid support vote for the opposition. Do you think it's also a protest vote saying, when looking at the military and military capacity, that, that as you say, there's corruption, well, corruption allegations in military mm. ranks as well, that alongside with that, that, that there's no plan on how to, how to combat Boko Haram and how to really kind of get, get to terms with, with, the, uh, uh, with the violence that's taking place in Nigeria. Yes, certainly. I mean, I think, you know, the, again, the, both parties, it's important to flag up that both the opposition and also the ruling party have not really made it quite clear what the counterinsurgency strategy is. But I think that, the, you know, from voters' perspective, the most important thing here is they've given the ruling People's Democratic Party 15 years of power. And, and I think the perception is certainly if, if nothing has changed in 15 years, then people kind of willing to give somebody else a chance. It's not because there is a strategy or, or policy in place to address the corruption issue to address the security challenges and also what could potentially be economic headwinds but I think people really just want to give a protest vote and, and give a chance for something different. What happens if they get something different? You know, how, how, how will the country look and how easy will that transit of, of power be? Well I think you know there, there are two fronts to look at it. One, domestically, I think that's where the biggest change will be. As far as economic policy, Nigeria's economic policy will not change. It's a country that is still heavily reliant on um, foreign direct investment. Nigeria will continue to actually make an effort, irrespective of what government wins, to address that problem. But for them to address that problem, they need to address the security issue, which is becoming a kind of, um, it's, it's sort of affecting investment uh, investor interest. And I think that, you know, what what it's it's not quite clear where the government is going to go but whoever comes in they certainly you can almost expect a revamping of the security apparatus do you think there's one side that's being seen as as a lot more business friendly as well no I, I, I don't think so at all I mean and, and this is the most important thing for a kind of an outsider looking at Nigeria the economic policy is unlikely to change now the key reforms that need to happen on the economic side particularly cutting of expenditures but given the political sensitivity at the moment and given how closely um, contested the elections will be, a new government will be slightly hesitant to start cutting expenditure because that has implications for social spending um, at a time when people already feel that they, they're being pinched and being squeezed dramatically. So I really, I don't think there's going to be a dramatic change in economic policy, at least in the first year for the new government. 
And, and just kind of outline the, the, the time frame as well, because there, there are four different rounds of elections. So we've got um, the presidential elections and the um, state assembly elections on the 14th of February. And then on the 28th of February, the National Assembly elections, um, which is also the kind of uh, semi-important um, elections and the governorship elections are happening. Now, it's imp what the reason why this election, again, is, is so significant is not just the presidential elections that will be closely contested. The ruling party has actually dominated all tiers of government. This election could potentially see an an upstage in across all tiers of government and I think that's the reason why more than just the presidential elections people also need to be watching for what happens with the National Assembly because the composition of the National Assembly and one party not dominating both chambers could potentially cause difficulties for policy um, policy continuity interesting Nanji, thank you very much thank for coming you. in to talk to us. Uh, have a good trip to Nigeria as thank well. Thank you. I know you're heading out there. Uh, Nanji Teto, Vice President of Teneo Intelligence.